From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Jackie Coffin. The sudden collapse of two banks is sending shockwaves across the financial community. Silicon Valley Bank, which finances many tech companies, went down on Friday. And Sunday, the Signature Bank in New York followed. The closures have many in fear, with some even rushing to their own banks looking to withdraw cash. And on Wall Street, a number of bank stocks opened sharply lower, with trading even halted for some banks because of the instability. Those banks are thousands of miles away, but the situation has many across Montana concerned as well. With more on the impact for Montana and where exactly that level concern is, here's our Haley Monaco. The shutdown of the U.S. 16th largest bank in California on Friday has left many asking questions. One being, could this happen in our own state? A wave on both coasts of bank closures disrupted the nation over the weekend. Now the question is, will that happen again? Will it be like a domino thing? But lifelong Billings resident John Robinson doesn't fear a shutdown here in Montana. I don't think it'll happen here, no. We have a lot of local credit unions and smaller banks here that shouldn't have issues. Robinson isn't a banker, but Carrie Hagerberg with the Montana Bankers Association and financial planner Gary Buchanan both echo Robinson's thoughts. Montana banks are well capitalized, well reserved, well managed. Montana banking system is strong and I think in general Montana banks are stronger. One reason banks are safe in the treasure state, according to Buchanan, is the businesses they work with. Montana banks in general do not have the exposure to crypto which took down the two New York banks, and to new IPOs and relatively new high-tech companies, many that have not earned profits yet. Scenes like this from California are startling. Long lines of people waiting to withdraw money from their accounts. That's something Buchanan is hoping won't happen here. I think it's going to be rocky for a while because I think the first thing people do often is panic and I'd suggest you don't. This happened at a, a very rapid pace. Once the word you know, got out that the bank was struggling, uh, people rushed to take their funds out of the bank, which exacerbated the problem. And that's something Robinson says he understands. He, like many others, is closely watching what happens, but doesn't feel the need to withdraw his money. Uh, I think when you're talking like hundreds of millions of dollars and somebody pulls that out versus, uh, you know, if I pull out the $387 in my checking account, I'm probably not going to cause a run on the bank. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. As the legislature works out the budget, Governor Greg Gianforte signed some of his top budget priorities into law. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian has a closer look at the bills, including what leaders called historic tax reductions. Monday at the state capitol, Governor Greg Gianforte and Republican state lawmakers celebrated what they called big steps for Montana taxpayers. It's interesting standing here behind the, the statue of Thomas Marr. Um, we're here leading the charge just like he was. We're leading the charge for taxpayers um, all across this state. Gianforte signed eight bills, including six that together implement hundreds of millions of dollars in immediate tax rebates and long-term tax reductions. Today, we're making it easier for Montanans to raise a family, to earn a good living, to own a home, to retire comfortably, and achieve their American dream. House Bill 192 sets $480 million aside for income tax rebates of up to $1,250 per person. I think this legislation is a promise delivered. When we ran our campaigns in the fall, we said, we're going to shock the public. We are going to actually take money out of the Treasury and give it back to them because we have overcollected. House Bill 222 uses another $280 million to fund property tax rebates of up to $500 on primary residences each of the next two years. Other bills in the package will lower income tax rates starting in 2024, increase exemptions from the business equipment tax, pay off millions in state debt, and provide funding to secure road and bridge grants. Throughout the session, Democratic lawmakers have been critical of how quickly the majority advanced this package. 
House Minority Leader Kim Abbott and Senate Minority Leader Pat Flowers said in a statement, quote, What the governor signed into law today is over $1 billion in reckless spending that disproportionately benefits the wealthiest Montanans. It does nothing to help working and middle class families get through the cost of living crisis. The governor's office says now that these bills have been signed, the Montana Department of Revenue will begin working on plans for implementing the tax rebates. For the income tax rebate, they expect it will be distributed automatically sometime later this year. For the property tax rebate, there will be steps for homeowners to claim it. That will be coming out later in the year as well. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Welcome to Tuesday, everybody. Hopefully the day treating you good so far. Local forecasts coming up here in just a second, but let's take a look at the U.S. national forecast today. Your headlines, parts of central and southern California, high risk of excessive rainfall getting hammered by a lot of Pacific moisture, and that's making its way into our portion of the country. More on that coming up. Parts of the northeast, heavy snow possible. Highest elevations of the Sierra Nevada and northern and central Rockies. More heavy snow in the forecast. Northeast coast, a nor'easter developing that could dump a bunch of snow on that area. For us, well, for some of us, spring-like temperatures today. Getting warm, but it doesn't last. Here comes our next system. Going to cool us down, bring us rain and snow. Details coming up. The biggest day of the year for Butte is just a few days away, and as Montana's most Irish town plans for one of the country's largest St. Patrick's Day parties, police are ready for any mischief. Let's head to the Mining City to check in with John Amy. In just a few days, this intersection at Park and Main in Uptown Butte is going to be loaded with people celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And local police know that with the holiday falling on a Friday and large crowds expected, well, they can also expect some shenanigans. Sometimes the leprechauns are a little restless on that day, and so we do have some, we normally have more than the, the average amount of arrests, let's just say that. Butte Police will have more than 20 officers on duty that day with help from the Montana Highway Patrol. Foot patrols of six to eight officers walking among the crowds has proven effective over the years. We can get to a disturbance if there is some kind of an argument or a fight. If we can get there and settle it down. It keeps it from escalating and it makes it better for everybody. For those who want to avoid potential rowdiness uptown, the Handing Down the Heritage event is going to be at the Butte Civic Center starting at 6.30. And it is a family-friendly environment with Irish music and dancing. And so it's a great place to come uh, to get away from the Bacchanalian orgy that becomes Uptown Butte on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> ben Rothbard attended his first Butte St. Patrick's Day last year and is looking forward to this year's revelries. It gets a little rowdy, but nothing that, that's really crazy. Cool. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was enjoying to watch and see, and it was something um, I've never seen before. And he doesn't plan on getting arrested. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News.